next guest uh, is a syndicated talk show host, uh, filmmaker, great researcher. He's actually filled in before as a guest host and was quite popular. We should have him back, but he lives up in Oklahoma. Holland Vanden Neuenhoff is a native of Oklahoma, formerly served in the U.S. Marine Corps as a rifle squad leader, and uh, he's been broadcasting six, seven years. And he also was a writer and producer on the excellent film A Noble Lie, Oklahoma City, 1995, the first full-length documentary examining the Oklahoma City bombing in light of new and suppressed evidence that proves the official story is a myth. Yeah, run by the same people that brought you fast and furious. You know who the Deputy Attorney General was at the time, <clears throat> is now the Attorney General uh, today. And I wanted to get him on because uh, he, he, he does have a you know, really uh, good intellect, a piercing intellect uh, when it comes to researching these type of things. And I wanted to get his take on the last few, what I believe are at least provocateur and allowed to happen, prior knowledge scripting. You can see how the media behaves. You learn when it's staged, you learn when it's not. You learn when they're just not letting a good crisis go to waste and you learn when uh, they are behind it or when I mean, even mainstream media admits every few weeks they bust some mentally ill person who's been profiled with an 85 IQ, who's schizophrenic, who they've given drugs and money to for two years on average, who they finally convince will give you another $10,000 and the heroin or the meth when you go blow up the Christmas tree. Or, again, and then they're, oh, we busted a terrorist. But now they're flipping the script from it's Al-Qaeda which the West openly runs in Libya and Syria and other areas too. Gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, you name it. And the reason I was in the film Noble Lie that we sell at InfoWarsStore.com, discounted, I hope you get it and give it to everybody. But you heard me this the last few years. I said all the Obama advisors say he needs to really get power and get done what he wants. Shapiro, you name it, in the Financial Times of London, their internal high-level donors, people that give you know, like a million bucks to the Democrats every year one way or another, they got internal letters and at meetings it got recorded. Uh, that, hey, we're going to blame uh, the, the, what they call the right wing, but they mean the real right wing, not the fake stand-in one. The libertarians, conservatives, they see that as left and right, at least in the paradigm they communicate. We're going to blame all this on them. Don't worry, uh, you know, he's going to get it done. And, and we've been told, gun owners, we, we killed the kids at Sandy Hook. Doesn't matter if real violent crimes down 49% since uh, 2001. Uh, excuse me, since 1991. It doesn't matter if that is accelerating. It doesn't matter if more guns mean less crime. It doesn't matter if Switzerland's the safest country in the world and has the highest gun ownership. I saw a Washington Post article this weekend admitting that but demonizing it. They're trying to take their guns. You can't take everybody else's guns and do all this worldwide if a couple countries stand out. Meanwhile, this new cop, which I look at this, I read the manifestos, which are his online postings, what he said, it fits the M.O., of one of their wind-up toys who's into being a Hollywood star, that, that's what they think being a cop is, been in you know, counterterrorism training and all this, going off the rails, being mad because his whole identity, I mean, just look at the photo of this guy. I've seen that eye. I've seen that look. Let me see a document cam here. It, it's, it, it's a narcissism look, and you see the, you know, the whole way except the way the cops are so scared shooting up innocent people's cars, the way the media is spinning it like, oh, maybe it's good, maybe it is racism. That's telling you that it's not staged. Now, they'll sure use it to push drones and police state and all the rest of it. And, you know, to sell the idea of just we'll kill whoever we want at checkpoints whenever we want. I mean, they have a bank robbery in Denver. And an hour later, they shut down a highway and aim M16s at every family in their cars. I mean, and if they killed people, it'd be good. Kill more. I mean, the proof you're a good American is to kill yourself. Uh, you know, the, the government's God. Everybody else is trash. Everybody else is filth. Now, I know most police are not like this, but the system's trying to twist them. So I want to get Holland Van den take, because he, he was on a lot up to the election, saying, look, they're going to stage stuff. They're going to blame it on us. They're going to provocateur it. And then you get Anderson Cooper's green screen, his nose disappearing. Uh, I mean, are they doing that on purpose to make us focus on that? Knowing the public's not that awake and will think we're kooks. Uh, multiple men who were police from another jurisdiction caught by police. Then the media said it didn't exist. They didn't say, hey, they were cops. Later, it's come out in court. It's, no, that didn't happen. You didn't see that. See, it's the evidence of the cover-up, the scripting, the way they jumped on it within five minutes, literally, with tweets. That's how they caught them setting up Dominique Strauss-Kahn. He's a horrible globalist, but he was being set up uh, by Sarkozy. Still failed. The socialists still got back in. It just wasn't Kahn. 
two different brands of the New World Order stabbing each other in the back, separation of powers. That's one thing that holds back the globalist uh, throughout history is they're always stabbing each other in the back, holds back tyrants, the modern version globalist, was that the official Twitter of uh, Sarkozy got time zones off and tweeted a good 30 minutes before the police were even called, before he'd even left the hotel, that he had raped a woman and that he had been arrested. <laughs> That's like publishing in a whole bunch of uh, other time zone, you know, Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, and, and one other Asian country that Lee Harvey Oswald had killed JFK before he was even arrested and his name was even broadcast. They got the time zones off. Just like they announced Building 7 had just blown up and collapsed and, and CNN's going, it's not hadn't collapsed. Well, Reuters says it has. They got the scripting off. And then two BBCs said the same thing. You see, and it's not, people say, oh, are you saying Aaron Brown was in on it? No, he lived in New York. He went, but it appears to still be there, but it fell in its own footprint from the fires. There it is, okay, yeah. Uh, and then other networks, and I said it was probably Reuters, because I knew they're the highest level globalist internal propaganda feed. I said that on record. Turned out it was Reuters. BBC had to admit it. First, they said it wasn't real footage, that we'd faked it. See, we've got them, ladies and gentlemen. We have them now, okay? And if we just expose them, it's over. But we're entering the main danger quadrant right now. Now, he may disagree with me, so, and, and I want his take on Sandy Hook, on the Aurora. That's totally staged. <clears throat> So I haven't heard his his take on this yet. I haven't haven't heard him on local radio in about a month. I haven't been too busy. Uh, and I want to get his take on this new guy. I'm going to try to shut up and give him the floor for about 15, 20 minutes. Then I promise we'll go to your calls. Holland van den Neuenhoff, thank you for joining us, sir. Uh, thank you very much for having me on again, Alex. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. What do you think of that rant you just heard? Uh, your points on it? What do you think is going on right now? I think you're making very good points. Uh, what you pointed out in your uh, video release on the green screen of Anderson Cooper is the fact that CNN is actively engaged in a propaganda campaign revolving around the Sandy Hook massacre to uh, fulfill a gun control agenda. And as you pointed out, CNN has time and time again over the past two decades been heavily involved in the deep state agenda, being the propaganda arm of the Pentagon and the national security state and uh, whatever... Uh, uh, whatever the political agenda that needs to be fulfilled uh, during the current administration. Of course, we're seeing under the current uh, pretender and thief, President Obama, a mere continuation of the policies of President Bush, uh, expansion of the war on terror. And at the same time, he's asking us, the American people, to disarm ourselves at the very same time that they are uh, taking the drone technology that they've already used overseas to kill hundreds of children and they're importing it, they're bringing it here to this country and they're using it currently uh, in uh, the hunt for the LAPD uh, cop killer, the supposed cop killer, Christopher Dorner. So we see, we're we seeing if this event in California is not contrived and I'm reserving judgment on that, it perhaps could be legitimate, a legitimate uh, outpouring of rage at a man's life destroyed by a corrupt system. And if so, uh, we're seeing how a legitimate threat to the system, they, they see this lone individual who has just the right amount of training to be a threat to their control system. You see the panic mode they go into, protective details, dozens, shooting up passersby who happen to drive by the wrong house at the wrong who time. Who aren't even in trucks, and, 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 and a white guy, they pull over, let him go, and then shoot him up. Exactly. And this is not professional behavior. This is panic driven behavior. Uh, police officers are used to being having the tactical advantage in numbers and equipment. And oftentimes when you see them at a disadvantage, just like the overconfident person in an earthquake who loses his bearing because all of a sudden his size uh, has no standing on his survival status. They completely go to pieces. You see the police seeing that their their supposed advantages are no more and they simply go to pieces. We saw it after Katrina. We saw it at Waco when the ATF were, you know, basically got uh, their, um, they got beaten in the first firefights by a bunch of children and old men, uh, even though they had the tactical advantage and the firepower, but they, they came up against, uh, against some resistance they weren't expecting. They went to completely to pieces. You know, and I think you've gone to the heart of it. I want to talk about that first when we come back. This should, everybody, Al Sharpton says, we got drones, we're taking your guns, the government owns you. The globalists couldn't hold Baghdad. Any, if you're willing to fight, I don't care how many robots, how much crud you've got, unless you nerve gas everybody, you're going to lose. And if they start this civil war, it is going to wipe out the police and military, period. But I don't want that to happen because the globalists plan on that happening. 
Yeah, I mean, you'd be a fool to see it not happening. We see the potential of it fulfilling right now. Just imagine if a couple dozen Christopher Dorners were on the loose in one state pulling off such havoc. I mean, you would see a complete uh, collapse, uh, uh, instant martial law. And then that won't matter because they'll all, well, they're going to go to redoubts. They're going to go dig in when all this happens. And then that's going to just let the economy fall apart until they get citizens to rat people out. It's Listen, it's it's a trap. None of us want to do this, but I'm telling you, they're all talking about civil war. ProPure is introducing Pro One, all of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is the Pro One by ProPure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Look at this article up at PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. School board wants to take copyrights away from students and teachers. Yeah, that's the new corporate global governance where they're saying that the UN will enforce where you can't even use words without paying a tax. And now with voice recognition, they're going to do it. And then when you write something or teachers write something, you don't own it. The government does. And that's how they actually spy on you. See, computers sound great in schools, but then everything you're writing is being read by the feds. It all goes into a database, and they say they have computer programs that check it for plagiarism. I mean, it's just a nightmare world they're building because none of us think about infrastructure. We just put up with whatever they roll out to us. Uh, going back to our guest, Holland Vanden Neuenhoff, syndicated talk show host, documentary filmmaker. Okay, Holland, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. Bottom line, now hundreds of millions more bullets they're buying, 1.6 plus billion checkpoints, highway checkpoints, TSA checkpoints in Austin now. I mean, it's just, it, it's accelerating, but it shows how it's a paper tiger because if we ever resist it, it's all over. But they're going to stage stuff and blame it on us to get the hearts and minds. That's the race in the hole. That's why we've got to expose they're the ones behind so much of this. But what do you make of them now in CBS News and others hyping this guy like a hero going, well, it is wrong. And I guess it is good to shoot a, you know, shoot somebody's daughter to get back at their dad. Uh, I mean, what do you make of that psyop now? I guess that leftist terrorism because he's a gun grabber. This is something good. Yeah, it's, it's very tempting to have uh, some sympathy for the suspect in this case. And frankly, his case does seem like it needs to be examined. But his actions in, in slaying innocent people, uh, the daughter of a police officer and her fiancé, that has no moral value. I have no sympathy for that at all. And let, let me clarify my position, what I was referring to earlier. I do not uh, want to engage in a shooting war with uh, my fellow Americans in this country. I think that would be the absolute worst case scenario. If it does come down to that, I'm pretty sure what the outcome is going to be. But if that does happen, there's going to be 
traumatized generations that it's going to take a long time to get over. It's going to, it's going to be, it's not going to be good. And I don't want that. Violence is not what we are striving for. And if we win the information war that we're all engaged in right now, we don't have to go to violence. We don't have to use violence and self-defense because we win the information war. We bring the people over to our side. They see the falsity of the system being erected in front of them and they reject it. So we are not even close to that. We're still in the first phase of resistance right now, which is the ideological war in which you have termed and uh, basically owned as the information war. Well, all I did was look at what the enemy did, saying that 90% of Pentagon operations were info war, and I took their term and turned it around to try to restore the republic. How do you see things going for the globalists right now? I mean, I see them carrying out their global takeover, but it's not happening in a vacuum, and people are way more awake than they thought we would be, and their own internal white papers admit this. Yes, the... Uh, the they're not keeping up with the curve, the learning curve that the people are engaged in, in the information world. We are waking up, we are learning, people are, the human brain is talking to, to itself like uh, no other time in recorded history, learning things about itself, learning things about what is going on, learning things about our respective systems that we live under, See, seeing the similarities, say, hey, uh, my system's corrupt too, your system is corrupt, what are we doing here? Let's come up with something else. Let's come up with something that works. Uh, so that's happening, we are talking, having that dialogue, that discussion. And they are, they are behind. We are winning in this because we see the desperation, the very fact that they are engaging in atrocity at Sandy Hook, at Tucson, and other places tells you that they are desperate. These are the actions of basically a serial murdering system. When pushed to extremes, when stressed, will lash out and seek blood. To teach us to love them so they can play the part of the hero. Exactly, exactly. And something about this Dorner case is it reminds me of the like the so-called sympathy being droned out by the media. Like I said, it's, it's very tempting to be sympathetic to the man, and, and, and part of me is. But I, I have no sympathy for his value in slaying and taking innocent life. Uh, but it reminds me of in the 1960s and 70s, actually, when um, Marxist groups were, were actually advocating shooting cops on the street in order to make cops more antagonistic towards the citizenry and therefore creating a cultural divide between the police and the citizenry. So this could be a divide and conquer attack. You're right, I've forgotten about us. that. That's why going back about five, six years, I would get more angry at the police, not realizing it was a globalist tactic, having them act like goons to create the divide of us against them, when instead we need to be engaging them and waking them up and getting them back to American standards. Holland Vanden Neuenhoff, filmmaker, talk show host, uh, former Marine uh, rifle squad leader. Looking at this, uh, they've tried to create a militarized culture with the police where the public is seen as the enemy. But it's now public. The CIA brings in most of the drugs with the big banks. It's now public. The government runs al-Qaeda. It's now public, but, but not known by the general public. It's admitted, but not known. But with the intelligentsia, it is. And so they have real trouble coming out and attacking myself and others, talking about false flags now, as they try to flip the script onto gun owners, veterans, and the rest of us. Uh, do you see any scenario where Chris Dorner, uh, who says he reportedly loves Obama, loves Piers Morgan, and people hate the police so much in Southern California, and they, a lot of them are pretty bad out there. I've actually met some pretty nice ones, too, that... They're saying, yeah, let's kill more cops. I'm seeing this all over Facebook, Twitter, and it's being left up. I mean, we posted a video about, about uh, 3D printable gun cartridges or, or uh, uh, gun magazines, clips, whatever you want to call them. And, you know, YouTube's removing that. doesn't even really show how to make it. Uh, if, if I make fun of some globalist professor, they remove my video. But people can be up there saying, let's kill cops, and nothing happens. And again, they want to get black versus white, old versus young. I've got some clips of that coming up in a moment. Uh, but never American people against globalists. Or, hey, why does my tax money go to foreign banks? So I see it as desperate divide and conquer. And they want to get a shooting war started somehow, uh, I guess, to forever get the police to see the public as an enemy. But I think fundamentally, even though the globalists have a lot of good tacticians and people, 
uh, they think because they're being landed in helicopters and things on Air Force One that they're going to be able to negotiate this and win this. Uh, I really see them doing what Hitler and others did, you know, turning east into Russia or or, or biting off you know more than they can chew or you know the, the uh, Romans getting run out of. Uh, northern england uh, by the scots and then building that wall there i mean i really see them miscalculating but i don't want the miscalculation to happen but then if they do go ahead and start the civil war that'll be the quickest way to bring it to its end but uh, wh what are points you want to make on that rant and other points we haven't gotten to yet well looking at the actions that this government is undertaking the purchasing of of tremendous amounts of firearms and ammunition of police state technology, one could only conclude that they are indeed preparing for civil unrest. They're not buying billions of rounds of ammunition to fight Al Qaeda here in the United States. That is not happening. Who are they preparing for? Well, the other enemy is the American people. Now they know that um, trying to forcibly disarm the American people would 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 provoke violence. Uh, that's they have probably calculated that that cannot be ruled out. Therefore, they are betting on it. Um, and oftentimes when in a bad situation, it's better just to put your foot on the gas and uh, drive it towards its ultimate culmination point. And so they know it's going to get violent. So they are doubling down on dealing with the violence. The fact is that the American people must be disarmed for this uh, control grid to advance to the next stage. Because right now, uh, we're starting to grumble. We're starting to grumble and we're still armed. We're also grumbling because this government is also telling us that we should disarm ourselves. So um, the confrontation may come and they know it. So they're going to do it on their terms. That's right. They're going to they, strike first. Exactly. They know it's going to come. So they're not going to wait for a random chance to throw their calculations where, off. Where we have a real Lexington or Concord and they're clearly in the wrong. They want to strike first, but frame it like they didn't strike first. Yes, they said this time and time again. When Karl Rove boasted to the media about creating reality, he was talking about staging events and therefore altering the course of events after that. Therefore, you create reality. This is what they teach each other, staging events to create reality. They know this is going to happen, so they will stage something. They've staged everything else thus far with the gun control agenda in mind. Sandy Hook was scripted. Tucson was certainly scripted. Fast and Furious was run by the same That's office. That's right. That you instantly Tucson. see the scripting. People ask how we know and how we get proven right over and over again, you instantly see the scripting. Yes. In Tucson, when that happened, the first piece of news was the sheriff saying this was because of the political atmosphere. I didn't even know who was dead yet. And then we see at Sandy Hook, when I turned on the news, the first thing I heard was a police spokesman saying this was the result of access to firearms. I don't even know what's going on yet, how many people are dead or what's going on, but they're telling me why this occurred. You see the script running concurrently with the event unfolding. That tells you that script is laying on someone's desk ready to be read. Well, humanity doesn't awaken until we're under pressure. Uh, people are adapting. They are improvising. And the globalists should n look at the mass of zombies and, and think we're all weak. There's a large percentage of us that are not zombies. And just because you've neutralized most of the public into mindless, gibbering idiots, you know, arrested development morons, doesn't mean you've gotten a lot of us. And they need to understand that. Exactly. Exactly. A lot of us are weak. I mean, it's it's... It's almost scary how many people are awake, Alex. When when We Are Change Oklahoma goes out onto the highway and holds a Google Building 7 banner across the highway during uh, high traffic uh, high traffic times, I, I'm not exaggerating. Fully 10% of the cars are honking in support, probably half the truckers. Now, a lot of people are awake, and they just... They, they, they're not advertising it. They're not, you know, talking. They know what's going on, but they just choose not to engage. And frankly, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. But they, they are awake. They know what's no, going on. No, that's a on. giant mass of hidden force. Exactly. And if something comes down the pike that perhaps this massive force finds a bit objectionable, they may just, and if we can convince them, uh, affect a critical mass, you know what's going on. It's time for you right now in this day and moment right now to draw a line in the sand Make your stand and say no more. 
you're going to compromise me out of my destiny my entire life. But at this point, I'm going to say no, because once we cross this line, there is no going back. And my children, children will never experience the freedom that I did growing up in this country that we were. And by the way, free. I've said I'm not turning my guns in and my line in the sand is there. It is good and human and fundamental to commit to something and stop being afraid, ladies and gentlemen. They're already soft killing us, creeping around, turning up the ambient manipulation. We need to just accelerate this, not the physical end. They're going to do that. We need to accelerate the info war now, every day, before this war kicks off. We've got to use the info war. Exactly. And this is a process. We make our stand every day with the choices we make. Once you wake up, you start making choices with what you're going to do with your day, where you're going to spend your money, what you're going to do with your energy. If you're going to spend four hours watching TV, if you're going to disengage from those matrix, those are little stands we make every day, every month in our in the information war that we and they know we're pulling away from them. That's why they're desperate to get us to come back. And it's not happening. And as we make these stands, make these decisions, that will give us the strength and the character that when the decision becomes more dire, more consequences. We've already made these decisions before. We've paid little prices before, and we we were proud of our decisions before. Now we're being given a, a bigger choice. Are we going to make a stand here? Yes, we are, because we've already been through this process. We're evolving. We're trying to fight back, and we're going to say no. I am not going to go quietly into the night. I am not going to turn in my firearms for better or worse. That is not going to happen. That's right. And, and, and notice they've now backed off, and Obama's out with guns, and Morgan's out with guns, Piers Morgan. They're like, we never wanted your guns. As soon as they lose an offense, they pull back and say, there was never a fight, because they don't want us getting together and massing ourselves. They don't want us forming organizations. They want us, uh, and of course, that's a military tactic as well. They don't want to give us any kind of even ideological victory. Uh, for example, in California after 1990, when President Bush Sr. outlawed uh, assault rifles in that state, there was a massive non-compliance. People were not turning in firearms. That was not reported in the news because that would tell you that their people were not complying with the law. It was like 99% people were not turning in their firearms. That's just not going to happen. They're not going to grant us these ideological victories in the mainstream media. We just like when we them. say we're going to have an opt-out week, they just turn the body scanner off they're exactly. not gonna let us know we have power exactly but we can see beyond that because we're not paying attention to their mainstream propaganda see we're we are fighting the fight we're not the bystanders the the mainstream audience watching tv we are fighting the fight we see the, the how well, they that's try the to essence once the you fight. realize they're cold-blooded lying enemies you know, you know just like that big gun shop owner listened to morgan and he lied to him about everything and the guy just said, I can't believe he lied like that. You kept your word that if I let you go in there, you'd be polite. And I said, I didn't want to, but I kept my word. Uh, and people said, well, why were you nice? Because I gave somebody my word. My point is, is that you need to understand, folks, they're not well-meaning liberals. These are not liberals. These are cold-blooded people using psychological tactics, anthropology and sociology tactics, who see you as an animal or as a tribe they're observing. That's how they describe us. And, and yeah, so, yeah. we don't, we're observing you, too. You know, you little chicken necks, this is a bunch of professors and technocrats who hate real men, hate families. That's why they're ideology. They're a bunch of weaklings. I'm telling you, folks, it's an army of nerds running this thing. Okay, I don't mean there's a lot of nice nerds, too, but I mean it's an army of sycophantic nerds running this who literally think we're like a bunch of villagers they're watching from a spaceship. I got news for you. You're not God. Okay, and we know what you've done, you little turkeys. We're coming after you. Yeah, it's herd management. That's how they consider it. They cull the herd from time to time so they can reap its wealth. But the herd is becoming sentient. We got internet now, and we're we're realizing that we have uh, herd masters, and we are going. We're breaking away. We're breaking down the fences. We don't care what you say or do anymore. We don't even want to fight you. We just want to get off the reservation. No longer be under your control. We're not looking for a fight here. If you if you just want to give up your control system, that's fine. That's not going to happen. History dictates it won't. Um, but hopefully, you will wake up too. I mean. We need to engage the enemy also. Talk to them. And I'm not just talking about police officers. I talk to police officers all the time. And frankly, most of them are some of the most upstanding human beings I've ever met in my life. But there's a good number of them out there who are corrupt. And the other police officers, they're in a paramilitary organization. They're used to following orders. They will tolerate that stuff in order to further their own careers and their own security and that of their families. It is good people tolerating evil within their ranks. We need to engage the police. We need to engage those who are trying to control us. We don't need to do this. These are these are old ideals of managing the human herd, culling it. We can come up with better solutions. Their system is obsolete and their their resort to violence is indicative of the fact that their system is obsolete. 
You're right. The reason they're panicking and in an arms race against us is they're losing the info war, folks. They're losing on every front because their own minions have now figured out, wait, I'm in the crosshairs of this, too. Yeah, and we need to ascertain the nature of the threat against us. Like you said, Alex, we need to know we're not just facing um, liberals who hate America. That's not just what we're facing. We're facing a funded propaganda arm called the media, CNN. That is part of the Pentagon and the national security state. They've been owned since the first Gulf War. Yeah, that's not hippies. That's the foreign banks that run our government. Yeah, it's not hippies who hate America. I mean, they're the tools, but the guys pulling the trigger, they wear suits, and they, they don't uh, go to potluck suppers. They eat at five-star hotels. Absolutely, and they're all eugenicists. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, I want to play a clip here because in the divide and conquer, I knew they'd try to put Obama in to create racial division. Bring Obama in in the name of unity so a bunch of you know white people vote for him. Again, not that McCain was good either, total globalist. The fact is it's staged. It's rigged, the whole thing. And then now I've never seen it without even trying to look for it. I mean, it is the most fashionable thing to say whites are dumb, whites are stupid, whites are ugly, whites are pathetic. You know, the white men can't jump thing, but times 100 to make whites not like black people. I mean, I mean, see, see, black front men like Jamie Foxx are out there not knowing why they're encouraged to do all this by the system. Believe me, folks, that's all vetted and scripted. They think it's all part of a big joke. It's meant to create division. Now, what if David Duke got up and said white people are the most talented people in the world? Well, he does. Uh, but the issue here is what th this is a major psyop, folks, because it's everywhere where you don't like big government, won't turn your guns in. You're a racist. So stuff that isn't racist is called racist and things that are racist are pushed. And again, it's meant to create some type of bizarre clash um, Holland, Van der Neuenhoff, what is your take on this PSYOP? What do you think they're trying to do? Well, it's definitely divide and conquer. And this kind of sentiment that Jamie Foxx and Chris Rock are, are um, subjecting us to, it's, it's infantile. This is not, uh, we don't play with building blocks anymore. We're, we're in the adult world. And, uh, and adults don't uh, view things in terms of racial matters. I don't view uh, my interactions with society in terms of racial politics. or No, it's about ideas anything. and what people stand for. Yeah, and, and I, I'm not even, I, I'm racially indistinct, so I really have no dog in the hunt. But the, the, these are all just, it's infantile, it's divide and conquer. And frankly, I don't, are people really buying this, this black and white divide anymore? I mean, it just, it's, it just seems so outdated, but I guess it is working because that's what the media is pushing. And we see it time and time again, people are falling for it. And we see a lot of people right now under President Obama. We saw this under President Bush for eight years under President Bush. Liberals were my best friends in the world because for, I was talking smack on the Bush administration. So were they. As soon as President Obama became president, I was, they literally, we were stabbed in the back several times. We were sabotaged and so forth by our erstwhile friends. Now we're seeing a a uh, pendulum swing. Now we're seeing a lot of Republican so-called right-wingers talking about revolution and, wow, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and so forth. Well, they were completely silent for eight years. So exactly. Just, it isn't about Republican, Democrat, uh, identity politics or black or white. But see, even though we're not into identity politics, it's real because they've gotten the illegals and then other Hispanic supporters to say, get rid of the borders, or you're racist against Hispanics. And I'm like, uh, what, pay for everybody's babies and go bankrupt? And then the illegals vote to take my guns? You see, so exactly. they force you into, they because even if you don't want to operate at that level, a lot of these groups are operating as an identity group. Yeah, I don't want to be talking about race, but apparently I have to in the 21st century still. And I get this when I'm on socialist globalist shows. They go, we got the drones. Ah, ah, ah. Because they know it's about power. Really, you got the drones with Dorner. How's that helping you out there in Southern they California? In Afghanistan also, and that's not working so well for them. If you go to InfoWarsStore.com, you can get the film that was uh, written and researched and produced in part by Holland Van den Neuenhoff and Obel Lai, Oklahoma City, 1995, to understand this has got police officers that were threatened with murder by the FBI. They exposed the bombs in the building. I mean, it's an unbelievable film, InfoWarsStore.com, or by calling 888-253-3139. And don't forget, uh, we take the money when you buy books, videos, T-shirts, you name it, put it back into the news organization, back into doing more. We're having the $115,000 film contest, our biggest contest ever. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash contest to find out. You still got two and a half months to finish the short film, long film, whatever you want to win the 100000 uh, second place gets 10,000, third place 5,000. But the real thing is that top group of people 
We're going to interview you and talk to you about coming to work at InfoWars with films I produce and Army. Because films are one of the most effective weapons we've got. And so we're just going 110% here. This is personal for us. Once you realize you got a bunch of crazy killers running stuff and you're risking your life to fight them, you got to go 110%. So be part of Operation Paul Revere at InfoWars.com forward slash contest and buy the books, the videos, the materials, the PrisonPlanet.tv memberships to support us and spread the word about the broadcast and our local AM and FM affiliates. Corbin in West Virginia, what a trooper holding. Sorry about that. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, Alex. How are you doing today? Good. God bless you. Go ahead. I'm an RN here in West Virginia, and I just want to bring up some mental health issues and the uh, uses of the SSRIs, the MAOIs, and the TIOA. I work here at this uh, hospital. I'm not going to name it because of all the laws and regulations that I'm supposed to uphold. But I work in this hospital, and we feed these kids these drugs daily. And they're very violent. I'm going to say that I'm working on one of the violent levels of this hospital. Most of them are 13 and 14 years old, Alex. I asked the doctor the other day because I'm really getting sick of taking care of these kids. I said, what is the scope of treatment here, actually? Because I see nothing being done. They say, we're trying to make them feel remorse for the things that they've done. And like I said, I'm not going to name some things, but I want you just to imagine the worst psycho killer movie you could imagine. And that's what these A 13-year-old slitting their 3-year-old sister's throat. Yes, sir. I mean, you, and it gets, you know, uh, rape and everything else. Just the things I've heard and how well thought out it is. I said, what is the scope of treatment here, doctor? He said, well, we're trying to make them feel remorse. Well, I start talking to these kids, Alex. I do my own thing because, like I said, I'm a nurse. I'm supposed to be looking out for their health as well. Well, I ask them, I say, how do you feel on these medications? What does it make you do? Uh, is it working for you? They all tell me the same thing. No, it's worse. I said, well, what happens? What's your signs and symptoms? Well, I had this one kid the other day tell me that for the past three years, he's had the same dream of this same girl that lives on his street. Well, here's the thing, Alex. As a juvenile in the state of West Virginia, your papers are not to be reviewed or brought to in a court of law against you. So and so you can't things, tell people that when he gets out, he's planning to go stab this girl. That's exactly, Alex, what I'm saying. And here's the thing. When he turns 18, we have to release him that day, and then we have to wait until he commits a crime to bring him back in. And again, they grab these kids when they're bad in school, when they're eight, put them on psychotropics, and then they become demons with the video games, the culture. If you believe in spiritualism, it's basically a drug that allows demons to take control of your mind. Regardless, it's causing them to kill. Let's get Holland's take on this. We're going to do 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes of overdrive, maybe an hour overdrive. This is so important. Can you stay with us, Holland? Yes, I can. Okay, I want to okay. keep going to calls. We're going to, and, and, and stay there, uh, Corbin. I'm going to bring you back after the break, but a, a quick comment on what he just said. Well, yeah, the system is self-sustaining. We see the drugs being used to turn our children into psychopathic killers and then are not being treated, and they go on to commit crimes, thus justifying everything that is being inflicted upon us. And their answer from Sandy Hook, and this is more mental health, more kids on drugs, which will cause more of the mass shooting, and then more mental health, more drugs. But exactly. It, so it's Brave New World 1984. They're, they're playing out the script. Unbelievable. And it, it says on the insert makes you do this. It's, it's not a conspiracy theory. And our guest is Holland Van Den Neuen off for taking phone calls. Listen, they use the national security state to cover up their crimes. And they selectively use the medical privacy issues that when you've got people adjudicated, you know, 13, 14, 15 as psychopathic killers on the drugs, of course, uh, you know, already abused and things, then put on drugs that take away their inhibition, the, the, the violent culture, the way it's glorified. And the good news is I have my Second Amendment that when one of these guys gets out when he's 18 years old wants to come to my house, well, I'm just going to be waiting on him. I'm not worried about it. Oh, got a crazy bust in the door? Meet Mr. Uh, Semi-Auto Shotgun. But you see, the globalists hate this. They're criminals at heart, and they want a system where their children, their little demons they've wrecked, can have fun with us. So that, that's what the Jacobins, uh, the Luciferians, the Illuminati, and, and the French Revolution that, you know, that they basically created and hijacked, they said, you know, the journey is the destination, raping, killing, burning, murdering, overturning God's creation. That's what they're looking for, the genetic engineering, the splicing, all of this. Uh, but I want to go back to Corbin in this short segment and get Holland Van Den Neuenhoff's take and then more calls from Leaf and others in the next segment. Corbin, uh, what else is going on there? So, so, so you're saying the common theme is they're on the psychotropic drugs. 
Oh, yes, sir. Uh, it goes beyond that. I mean, uh, and to be honest, like you just said, uh, coming to your house, people need to understand this, Alex. And like I said, I really had no other way to get this out here without, you know, ruining my license. But the, you have to understand, I'm talking, I was on one level, Alex. There's 30 kids up there. They're all from two counties. This is, you know, uh, one of the bigger hospitals in my state. But they have to be just, they have to really think that they're in a high place to really think that these kids don't live next door to you. And once they take your guns away and things, and like I said, just like you said, what are you going to do when 12-year-old Kimmy has been watching you? Because, Alex, they, they really, it's scary. They wait three months. It's all about power. It's all about the ownership. They watch. They know what you do. It's just like what you're saying with the government. They see you. I've had people tell me they know when Mommy and Daddy no, get sir. off work, and they know when playtime is. Listen, it's demonic. It's demonic. The coal culture is being given over, and the chemicals and everything is turning them over. But then there's the spiritual overlay. This is a very demonic plan. Uh, God bless you, sir, and uh, please call us back. You should do a YouTube video, but again, just don't say where you work. All of you need to not wait and just call in here. You need to get out and warn others. Uh, Holland, your take on that chilling phone call. Well, it reminds me, uh, perhaps uh, some say the ultimate plan of Satan, if, if one believes that, is to take God's creation and destroy it in front of him. Uh, perhaps that's at play. There's always unknowns at work, and we're, we do see a spiritual aspect to this. Uh, this is spiritual warfare, where it's, a, it's warfare at every level. They want to own our souls. They want to destroy us. And when you actually look at just uh, look at demonic possession, not as a, a literal fact, but look at what the, what the methodology is in trying to get someone under the, at least in the theology, under the influence of a demon. It's pretty much propagandizing them, uh, traumatizing them. It's, it's everything that's being done to the American citizen to make us not a whole person, to, to leave us a shell of a person that got to be filled by whatever trash that the control system wants to shove down our throat to keep us happy slaves, to keep the, the herd fat and happy while they capitalize off of our flesh. Absolutely. The only way they can take over is to turn our children into manifest demons, whether that means decadence or not caring or, or being nihilistic or being flat out psychos. And they're going to take a lot of them and turn them into cops. I mean, it's, it's, it's a folks, you ain't seen nothing yet. And that's why... People need to realize just how serious this situation is. More phone calls straight ahead. We'll get to uh, Leaf, and we'll get to, uh, well, Scott is after Leaf, and then we'll get to Joshua, Chet, Ron, and others. Your call's all straight ahead. Even though we're mentally waking up, even though we see people finally getting out of their coma, it's not enough. I mean, the tyranny has gotten cartoon level. But the, the, the globalists and their minions are drinking their own Kool-Aid as well. Uh, they try to project this image of all-powerful, but Southern California is paralyzed and the police are gripped in catatonic fear over something statistically still that's very, very uh, remote that they'll be killed by one of their uh, own, supposedly. But they, the globalists are able to shut down our economy. They are able to selectively enforce taxes. George Washington, of course, famously said the power to tax is the power to destroy. And this is economic warfare, transferring our jobs to China, deindustrializing the U.S., putting in carbon taxes that everybody else is exempt from, Obama raising taxes on the poorest Americans, totally cold-blooded, but it's okay because he loves them, he's liberal. Uh, I mean, just the con games. How do you get around the economic shutdown? Well, you start buying locally whenever you can. You start growing a garden. You start making those choices. You start supporting the mom and pops aggressively. And it doesn't mean you're always perfect and won't sometimes, you know, sometimes you don't have a choice. But we better, like you said, the little battles every day uh, because this is serious business. Uh, Holland Vanden Neuen off comments on that. Uh, yes, definitely. As for the economy, yeah, you need to start planning now because once the economy fails, which it will on purpose or contrived, most likely they will simply trigger the crisis because they know it's going to come anyway and they want to control it. They have, they know that the old system is collapsing. It's a, It was built in the 19th century. It's old and the timbers are creaking. They have a new high-tech dam ready, a 21st century dam to contain the waters of the people. Uh, once the old system fails, they have that ready. And when the chaos caused by the, the collapse of the old system, we will be begging 
begging for their new control system. But to avoid that, we, we need to avoid uh, being uh, hungry enough to have to make that choice. And that means coming up with support systems now, engaging your local economy now, engaging alternative currencies now. So when we do have to engage in alternative currencies and bartering and, and acquiring local food sources, we're not uh, guessing. We already have an established system. You already have a network. You have a community that you can go to. Well said, well said. Just realizing evil predators are in control and withdrawing your consent and your support, even verbally, and really not hating these people, but realizing they're a danger. Just like a highway by your house is a danger to your children. I mean, being aware that that's the danger over there uh, and not being scared of it, but but being steadfast and any opportunity you have to hurt the system anytime you've got a way to expose it to, because it's a cancer. The system is destroying our constitutional system. It's the imposter. We are the counter-revolutionaries. Leaf in Oregon, thanks for holding her on the air. Hello? Yes, sir, go ahead. Hi, first-time caller, long-time listener. Thanks, Alex, for all your info. No, no, thank you. Difference. Thank you. Don't thank me. Go ahead. Um, I'm a little nervous, so excuse me if I stumble. Um, I want to talk about some of the crazy stuff we're learning in our psychology class. That's okay. Well, you're learning that men inherently are all rapist and bad. You're learning that world government's good. Are you learning about how you're a racist as well? Well, basically, they're indoctrinating us into this whole new religion of psychology and social Darwinism. And so what we're learning right now, we're learning about, um, we're reading The Descent of Man by uh, Charles Darwin. Yep. And what blew me away, I couldn't believe this, he actually says in his book, that only a small percentage of people are evolving, and these are the evolutionary elite. And he calls the rest of us evolutionary retarded. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd read that quote. He wrote a couple of books. Which book was that? Uh, the Descent of Man. Yep. Yeah, and not only that, he, he even goes on to say, I'm paraphrasing here, he says that if the, the evolutionary elite allow their sons and daughters to breed with the evolutionary retarded, it'd be the end of humanity. So this is insight into their mindset right there. And this gives them justification and reasoning for eugenics. No, 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 no. 160 years ago or whatever, he wrote that. His cousin Galton picks it up. The royalty all here is we're elite. We're going to set up. We're going to develop the science. We're going to discover why we're all inbred and dying. And we're going to get rid of all these people. And it's all off Malthus 100 years before that. That's what Endgame covers. But no, no, that's what they teach. Again, they're not liberals, and again, they said we can't give our genetics to the general public. We just got to kill them. So see, and then they say anybody who is upstanding and not of their bloodline, that's the number one enemy. So see, it's even a lie. There are a bunch of people that want a monopoly on the future. We own the future. We are the future, as Obama says. Uh, tell us what else they're saying. We'll get Holland's take on it. Well, it's just insane. I'm taking, a, I'm getting my degree in computer information systems, and, and why am I taking this class in psychology? Why is it required? No, no, they make you. That, listen, that's part of what woke me up. Uh, in, in just the first classes I took at community college, because I wasn't sure I even wanted to go to college. I was working two jobs, and uh, you know, uh, knew it was a scam. So I went to community, and, and they said first classes: psychology, sociology, anthropology. And uh, Texas history, of all things, I guess, in Texas. And, and every class was whites are the devil and evil. Uh, men are bad. The family is bad. World government's good. We're going to take your guns. We're going to reduce population. And then I'd go turn on C-SPAN uh, hearings about how the extremist conspiracy theorists and militias believe there was a plan to take over and do everything I saw being taught. Uh, keep going. Go ahead. Well, it's insanity. They even they even get into religion and they talk about how well religion's not a real theory because you can't prove it wrong. So don't even discuss that with people. Like, like you shouldn't even talk about it. And then furthermore, you can just look at um, Charles Darwin's book. What is it called? The Evo, um, the Origin of Species. The full title of that book is The Origin of Species or the Preservation of the Favored Races. Right there. I mean, that's just in plain sight. And, I mean, so far, college has been pretty good. I've learned a whole bunch of stuff. It's really opened my mind. But as soon as I got into this psychology after listening to you since basically Endgame, I, it was just – it just made perfect sense. Oh, here's their whole reasoning behind everything, eugenics, world control. Listen, my dad was everything. top of his class, and this happens to everybody that's top of their class in high school. They, they take you to a special academy at a major university. Then they test the rest of it, and then they call you behind closed doors, and they say, you want to join the New World Order? 
I mean, you know, we're going to take over. We're going to exterminate almost everybody. I mean, that, that's what I'm saying, folks. This is this is real. This is all that's going on. And people need to understand this. Everyone who, who's got they I've been approached, you know, to join the new world order. I mean, this is a real deal, ladies and gentlemen. OK, I mean, and it's horrible. Uh, I appreciate your call. You should do videos about it. You should write a book about it. Uh, you should expose it. You should write a paper about it. You have to engage it everywhere. And, and remember, they play this mind game of, we don't say that. There's no world government. Well, you say right here, you want a world government. Oh, you're mentally ill. And you're like, it's called gaslighting. It's a psychological warfare technique. Uh, Holland, your take on what he was just saying. Oh, definitely. Social Darwinism was uh, nothing new. It's merely just a, uh, a development to justify old attitudes about their position. Uh, going back to Plato's Republic, the reference in a noble lie, uh, of course, the documentary that's being sold in the info shop. But social Darwinism was merely just an invention to justify the elite's position. They were asking themselves, why do we have this power to control society? How should we use it? Well, we are the elect. We're the elite by nature of our position. This ancient Brahmic class system. Uh, uh, anyways, so they use social Darwinism as justification. Francis Galton, who publicized Darwin, was a member of the elite. Darwin was a member of the elite. The Huxleys uh, publicized Darwinism to the full extent possible. Well, no, they were related to him. They did a five-family interbreeding study to create the Superman, and all it created was stillborn dead babies. Exactly, exactly. They have been involved in this from the beginning. Like I said, I keep on saying herd management. That That's just a, a metaphor, but that's oftentimes it's very applicable, and they are trying to breed the best elect they can, and they're trying to breed out any kind of sense of independence, uh, self-actualization out of the general population, because that's simply, uh, it's economically unfeasible. You can't take that into account. People they want, want us ugly. Told. They want us dumb. See, the Low-level eugenics is we're going to make the, everybody better. That's not what it is. Exactly. It is to breed a servile class and a controlling class. And, and that's up to the secret. point of when they get all the robots in place, then they're just going to get rid of everybody in their own words. That's happening right now. The Great Britain has just developed a robot drone that's going to fly uh, over to its target in Afghanistan by itself. And acquire. choose its own targets. And the U.S. has already come out. Well, they had them 20 years ago, but now they're admitting it to the slaves. Chet in Texas, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. Hi, Alex Holland. How are you guys today? Well, I guess we're all right. We're exposing the master plan. Hope folks are listening. Yes, sir. This is the first time I've ever called, and I've actually just been uh, you know, checking out your videos and and uh, following you, and sorry I missed you when you were in Katy, uh, which is pretty close to where I live. Um, I, I like to consider myself a, a true patriot. I'm what you would call the, um, uh, you know, I joined the military at 18, served, fought in Desert Storm, did three more tours in Iraq after that. I'm obviously one of Obama's number one enemies because, uh, you know, I lost half my team while I was there. And, you know, the whole PTSD issue, you know that we're going to be targets for him. And this gun control issue has got me greatly concerned. And the primary reason is I see a lot of uh, Republicans, NRA, and others saying, oh, it's never going to happen, it's never going to happen, it's never going to happen. The thing is, is Obama really has his ducks in a row. And he's out there on a major media campaign out in front of people every day, day in, day out, day in. Piers Morgan, you know, a joke, doing the same thing. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Obamacare was never going to happen, and the government would never openly admit they ran al-Qaeda, but now it's happened. I appreciate your call. Great points. Yeah, Holland, we've come to this point where now everything's really out in the open. Exactly, exactly. And it, it's not it's not a secret. They acknowledge this. This is talked about. I mean, the fact is they're openly, like you said, uh, supporting al-Qaeda, our State Department in Syria, in Libya, and other countries, in Mali, and God knows where else. This is literally 1984 and brave new world. We have the drug forced drugging of the children, which we've been discussing. We have the, the false dichotomy of left versus right, al-Qaeda versus the United States that switches back and forth. This is all being played out before, and we are fools if we're not going to recognize it's it. The Global scientific technocrats against all of humanity. Humanity must come together. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.